about to do some live drawing here. I did want to share it with everyone first, so. Send out a link before I get started here. It's going to be the day my internet's going to be screwy, of course. All right, let's get started here. All right, let's get started here. I don't need to hear myself, right. that's good. So, this is uh, the new cover for The War Scars, which is my graphic novel. Uh, I've been working on uh, regularly for the last year. Um, <laughs> the biggest reasons why I left Joe Blow was so that I could focus on this. Uh, most of the cover is done um, in terms of pencils and inks, uh, but now comes the Copic marker phase. Uh, the whole book is being done this way, which is why it's taking as long as it is and why it will take uh, that long. So... But it's worth it uh, to me. The whole point of the book is to be an ode to kind of the J.O. Barr, Crow area, the Joe Michael Linsner era, era of like black and white books, even The Walking Dead to that point. Um, so that's the inspiration behind it. So uh, I'm going to... So we're going to work on some of these characters today. This is the main character, Monroe. Finished him already. For the most part, uh, so I'm going to work on uh, I'm going to work on Garrett today, and then work my way around the other characters as well, and we'll see what we see. So I'm working with uh, Cool Copics, uh, me Cool Grayscale, and I'm doing that again with the whole book, but I'm also mixing in warm colors too. And I kind of come from a, the old school of uh, using pencils. And I found that Copics recreate that exact thing, but are less tenuous. Pencils can be a lot of work. Um, and they make a big mess. So it can really smudge all your work if you're not careful. But you don't really have that issue with with Copics as much. They're a little more forgiving. So what I tend to do is I start with a darker shade and then I work to a lighter shade. So this way I can blend a lot easier. I don't like to work lighter to darker. So I kind of go in and add shadows first. That's my first order of business. I may not be as chatty throughout this whole thing just because, well, I have to focus on working. So I just figured I'm going to draw and I have a YouTube channel and I can live stream. So why not share it with anybody that's interested? I love process videos. I love them. I love the fact that this day and age we can watch our heroes, our artist heroes, create their work in a live setting which, you know, growing up, I didn't even have the internet. So there was no option for that. And I would have killed. I would think I even bought a Jim Lee 
like a Jim Lee drawing image video. And it was like, it was like the Godfather. <laughs> it was like seeing something just amazing for the first time. Seeing somebody like that's been your hero for so long, like actually apply their trade. So uh, that really spoke to me as a kid. And uh, I'm not saying I'm Jim Lee. I don't have to be Jim Lee, nor do I want to be. Uh, but, um, you know, if you have a, a skill, why not share it with others to watch and see? I mean, how many times have we gone on YouTube to look up shit to do even a seemingly simple task and learn from it? So you can see I'm uh, going through and I'm adding the uh, adding the the first layer of of shadow depth on Garrett's pants here. I absolutely love I love crinkles, clothes crinkles. I love all of that. Like for whatever reason, I cannot explain it, but I love drawing them. I think, you know, everybody kind of has a thing that they're really into. For me, it's, it's this. And faces, and hair, and clouds. I think we all have, I mean, I, I like, I like drawing everything. Um, and I'm very detail-oriented. Uh, I, I kind of profane for, for detail. Like, great detail just amazes me. Like, kind of the Jeff Darrow style like over the top, holy shit, this is amazing detail where you like have to like look twice. So the good thing with Copics too is if you like fuck up and you like screw something up or maybe you like go over a line or something, like you can fix it pretty easily with blending. And yeah, again, it's pretty forgiving. The problem with pencils when you try to do shading is you only get a couple tries if you screw it up. And it can, like, ruin your drawing. Because it just, it, you know, the more erasing you do, the more it's going to destroy your paper. And you're screwed at that point. I'm sure, I know I've killed a couple drawings that way in the past. So another uh, aspect of this is you got to pay attention to your shadows. You got to pay attention to where things are going um, in terms of your light source. So for this one, the light source for these guys is coming behind them. Kind of like an old G.I. Joe um, uh, action figure cover. So the light source is coming behind, so it's going to create... Darker shadows kind of in the middle region of the character. So that's what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to kind of scribble in some of these. That darker shadow where it's going to hit. And I know that's going to hit more of these. I might mess with those a little more though. And you also want to leave, you know, a little bit of white space here because the light's going to catch on areas where uh, you have uh, depth in these in these wrinkles uh, in the clothing so the lights gonna catch there it's not all gonna be flat so you got to pay attention to where those lines are otherwise just it's, it's not gonna look right you know you can see it you can say oh that looks like really nice shading but it doesn't make sense and that's relatively important Make sure we get the cr crotchal region. One of my friend's kids saw this drawing and her, her initial response was, look at the package. We were all a little, a little taken aback by that comment. But uh, I guess that comes with the territory when you're doing that. So I tend to go all the way up through the, the figure um, to get them... Uh, with with each layer, so I'll go from marker to marker. You see, I'm just holding all these markers in my hand. I tend to do it that way, just way I can just quickly kind of transition. You could say, well, why don't you just set them all down 
because uh, when I set them down, then I'm like thumbing through trying to find the right color. If they're all in my hand, I can just look right here and grab what I need. So it's less of a hassle. It can break your momentum when you're like trying to find a damn marker, a specific number. Again, just hitting these initial shadows. I see a couple areas. I probably could add a little more detail, but... I'm in the finished, not perfect phase of my career on this. The goal with this book is to be the absolute best that it can be, but also to be done. Uh, we've all suffered from that. Anybody that's ever had ambition to create something, uh, you can find yourself crippled very quickly uh, by being your own worst critic and, you know, not thinking your work is good enough or whatever the case may be. I think of George McFly from Back to the Future. What if, what if they don't like it? What if they say I'm no good? Just don't think I could handle that kind of rejection. I can handle it. But uh, the point is to finish. Finish the work. I'm reading uh, J. Michael J. Michael Straczynski's book right now on writing, because uh, I am writing this book as well as many other things, um, and I find his book very insightful. And one one common thread through every writing book or you know, basically advice book from those that made it big is uh, finish, finish the work. That's the the biggest downfall I think to all of those that kind of makes a difference between those that quote-unquote make it and those that don't, is you have to finish. Finish the work. Don't talk about it. Just do it. I don't know how much I want to do on this belt buckle. So one thing about this cover, when you see the full thing, is... Everybody in this story has, they're all uh, individuals. They all have, um, obviously they're individuals. These aren't superheroes. These are people. And uh, <clears throat> one thing I wanted to do was make sure I'm showing their, their personalities. Because that's what people do, especially military people, is, you know, we show our personality in different ways. And um, that's something I wanted to do here. So they all have kind of like little individual aspects of themselves that are shining through be it a belt buckle or a tattoo or a patch or something everybody's got something that's oh shit i need to do these two um everybody's got something that's kind of signifying their identity i think it's something that gets lost in a lot of mainstream comics is that you're always seeing you know it's always it's just a costume that's it right like and that's supposed to be enough uh sometimes it is i guess um Let's see, so I'm not using 7, 8, 10, or 9. So I'm going to set those aside so I can focus on what I do need. I don't need two sixes. So now we go on to the next level. So Garrett here, he's got blonde hair, so that's going to be uh, something that'll be a little less... Uh, I'll use a lighter color for that. You don't want to go in dark with that. So with five, I'll come in and I just kind of just, I just hit it really quick. I just go real quick over the areas that I already hit because uh, I want to leave room to blend. If you go too heavy with your initial dark color, what ends up happening is it overpowers it. So you don't want to go crazy. Uh, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with those yet. So like this shadow here of the rifle on his chest. I don't want to go too crazy because then the shadow is going to spread way too far. I don't want it to spread that far. Again, leaving those areas. You want to leave areas to blend. You don't want to hit everything. You got to think about the way light actually hits objects, the way it reflects and the way it works. Uh, you don't have to be a lighting expert per se, but you do need to pay attention to it. And you'll see that it really starts to take shape after, once you hit it with uh, with 
the next, the second um, level, that's when you really see it kind of start to come alive and it kind of lets you know where it needs to go from there. And you can start to guide it just a bit more. And uh, yeah. And this is my first time doing a live draw, so I, I do want to do more of it. So I apologize if the angle kind of sucks. I do have it on a tripod, but I, I want to look and find something a little better that I can get an overhead view so you can see it just a little bit better. Um, so I do intend to improve <laughs> that if I continue to do these, but it was just on a whim today. I was like, you know, why not? Let's just do it today. I'll just go on and share my process. Who knows? Maybe somebody will pick up something that will help them. And that would make me very happy. So blending with uh, Copix. I just run right over uh, from the number. It's really that simple. It's kind of like paint by numbers in a way. Um, and it's really no different than pencils in that way. So, you know, different uh, levels of pencils that you're going to use from B to H uh, and then just blend them down. Um, it's, kind of, it's the same principle with the Copics too. And just run right over top. And the only thing is you don't have to do as much. It's, it's kind of a time saver if you're looking to do that kind of pencil blending. And there's a lot of great artists that are doing it. Um, uh, Louis, Louis Rosa. Uh, who just did, oh God, he's done tons of work. He's done, worked on Punisher. Um, he's, he did an issue of uh, Scumbag. Uh, he does that. He does Copics. He does really well. Really like his uh, Copic work. And he's got a, a, a tremendous style that I quite enjoy. I wish he did more of a regular book. But he seems to kind of just freelance, jump around. But you got to hustle, man. Got to hustle. Comics are, I don't know, it's kind of an unappreciated thing these days, which is ironic because everybody's rushing to make movies about them, but nobody's rushing out to the comic shop to buy them. So it just makes you, it's, it's, it's uh, kind of frustrating in a way. But, you know, even with those prospects, <laughs> I still quit my job to make a comic. <laughs> so either you just, you have to do it, uh, or, you know, it's just a, a temporary fling. You know, for me, I have to do it. All right, so these need to be just a little darker. Drawing the, the gear is, is essential to me. So I'm a combat veteran. I was with the 501st. I've been to combat in Afghanistan and Iraq, and that's a big part of what this book is. There is no... There is no other book like this on the shelves. I know because I go to the comic shop every week. Um, and uh, nobody's really telling our stories, so I'll tell them for us. Um, and uh, <clears throat> one of my chief things is, is getting the gear right. I see it all the time. It's so obnoxious. And I can see I left out an area here that I got to fix on Garrett's. I didn't finish the stock of his rifle here, so... I'm just gonna draw that in real quick. I'm not quite sure. Again, I apologize, the angle's not close enough for those of you watching. I'm doing, I'm doing my best. Um, I'll get it a little closer next time. <clears throat> so I'm just gonna add, add kind of like a grip here to the buttstock, or not buttstock, the grip, sorry. It's just kind of devoid of any detail. I just left it out. <sighs> Happens to the best of us. But I caught it. We're good. Uh, anyways, back to the gear. Uh, the gear is essential to me. All of the gear uh, in my in this book is going to be drawn exactly as it is. This These aren't like, you know, phony weapons or just made up shit. Which is fine like for a sci-fi story or a comic book story. You know, that's okay. Um, but... For if you're trying to tell a realistic story, you, you know, you, you got to go that extra mile, I think. Otherwise, it just takes out, it, it takes out any legitimacy to your, to what you're trying to tell for that kind of story. You're just like, okay, you don't, couldn't even take time to draw an M4 properly. Like, you know, 
It's only the most used weapon in the United States military, and still, it's not that hard to find reference for any of these. You can just Google <laughs> whatever weapon name it is. You don't even have to know the name of the weapon. You can just Google, like, U.S. Army Rifle. It will take you there. So you can see, hopefully you can see, that uh, now I'm hitting this with a number four, and I'll work my way all the way down to number one. And you can see that it's, you know, it's starting to take color, shape, it's starting to become more three-dimensional than what we started with, which was just flat black and white. Nothing wrong with flat black and white at all. I love, I, I love black and white artwork, uh, which is what this comic is going to be, but it will be in this kind of grayscale shaded, the entire book will. Um, and uh, I, I just, I, I love and appreciate black and white. Everything starts there. Um, this morning I saw on Butch Geis's page, Butch Geis is another artist I really love, uh, his work. He posted some pages from the Paul Gulesy did in a Marvel Spotlight book with Black Widow, you know, kind of pimping out Black Widow, which I saw last night and did not love. It was fine. A lot of problems. Uh, but um, he posted these pages that uh, Paul Gulesy drew. They were all black and white. I think they were all, at least they, he presented them as black and white. I don't know if the book was published black and white, but God, they were beautiful pages. If you're on Instagram, go check out uh, Butch Geis's page. He puts out a lot of like this classic kind of black and white artwork, this like almost like old, old school realism. It's very different than kind of say, you know, the modern, the modern kind of popular guys like Jorge Jimenez, who's, you know, just a fabulous fucking artist. But, you know, he, he's not, he's not hyper-realistic. He's very kind of a fantastic, what I call like big budget artist feel. Um, but Butch is not that. Butch is a great artist, but uh, just very different. But he, he regularly shares a lot of different art from those, those time periods. And they're, God, they're so beautiful. It's just a sight to see. I love them. Love them. All right, so you can see Garrett's pants are coming along. And, you know, if you're watching and you've been watching, you see how fast it really does come together once you start working in the copics. It really does. It's like, just it fills out very, very quickly, which is good, it's, you know. I don't want to spend the same amount of time that I spent drawing this, uh, shading it. <laughs> I mean, it already takes about a third of the time. So I don't want to make it any longer than it has to be. And that's kind of the point is to, is efficiency. It's why I'm not using pencils to shade. I saved the gun for last as well. Uh, I do that just because I really want to make sure that I get that right. Um, and when you're, your, your mindset's kind of a little different when you're, sh for me anyways, when you're shading uh, clothing um, and people, you're kind of not really thinking about the weapon as much, and then you can end up kind of screwing that up. So my favorite part, which I'll talk about, but I don't know if we'll get to it in this video, at least not today is when I'm done with everything is I come in with uh, um, my white uh, white pen and that's when I can go in and add some additional light details. And I love it, I love it. It's like, to me, it's like when things really, that's like the final step. It's the last phase of the journey and it's my favorite. I mean, it just, I get like giddy with excitement. That and then just doing some splatter. Some ink splatter is always fun. It's like the pinch of salt that you're throwing on it. Okay, those can be covered in. So can these. I haven't done much on Garrett's face here, but I'll probably I'm gonna hit some spots now. 
Beard is based on a person that I know. He's kind of the, it feels like, you know, cheesy to say, but he's kind of the heart of the book. In many ways, he represents, he represents a, a, a big aspect of who these characters are and kind of the pain and turmoil that goes through them especially in this journey. The story itself is about combat vets who come back from war and are trying to reassimilate back into society just as like normal everyday people. But because they naturally seek out something a little more dangerous, they end up getting embroiled in some shit that, uh, well, it's... A challenge for them but uh, the truth is they kind of want it they kind of need it but it is going to cost them and uh, make for some good storytelling I think and this is a story that's been in my head that's been that I've developed and written um, over the last decade so I'm beyond excited to share it but mostly excited just to tell it. And just telling it through words and pictures. So now I'm going in with the two. So the two is going to really blend everything and make it very like, what's the right word? Uh, kind of uh, liquidy, I guess. I don't know if that's the right word. But it, it, this is where things really start to blend. And this is where you can start to kind of refine and focus where the light is hitting and you can kind of fix areas that you didn't really that you're not really happy with and you can blend it in so once you hit the twos on copic markers the blending really kicks in assuming that you're using a, a, a color palette and you can see it all really start to come together and just pop which is the best part. Because then you feel like you're gonna fuck it up. <laughs> or hope you didn't, anyways. Again, I um I just love doing this. I've been drawing since I could hold a crayon. And um I don't ever pretend to be better or worse than anyone else at this. I just I enjoy it and I do it. And that's just that's all there is to it. It's actually kind of motivating doing a live video. I mean, even if there's even if nobody's watching, you feel like people are watching. <laughs> Cuz it's kind of like having the boss over your shoulder to make sure you get your work done. So, for those of you checking in, thanks for helping me get my work done today. The goal is to have this page done by the weekend. I think I can have it maybe even done today. I don't know. I do have some other things to do, but this is the priority of the day. Everything else I do today outside of working out is ancillary. It's life, but it doesn't matter as much as this. Ah, yeah, you see that? Oh, it's too really... I love the blend, man, when it finally it finally starts to really kick and you can see just even the subtle details uh, kicking in. So I always work in from out from darker to lighter, as you should, of course. Um, but man, the two really, really brings it to life. And then with the one... Sometimes you don't even need the one. And there's also a zero, which is really just a blender, just a blending. Think of it as just like a water marker. Uh, like very much like watercolors. This has a very, Copics are very much like watercolors in that way. Um, and uh, yeah, sometimes you don't, you don't really need everything. Sometimes I wish the tip was a little finer. You can, there are two tips on this too, so you can switch it around. I'll just show you. So you can use this tip as well. 
I don't use it that much, but sometimes I do. If you really want to get in for some uh, really fine detail, you could use the sharp end of the point. But I really like the, um, I like the other one because it's like a brush. So it's like you're painting. This one can be a little too, like right now, it's a little, you can't see it. It's just a little too close to see, but it can be a little too much. I'm not sure how much I want to blend this uh, belt buckle. It says original redneck on it because, well, Garrett is a redneck. He's not a hillbilly, but he's a good old boy. But he's also a fucking war hero. But he's got a lot of problems. A lot of problems. So Garrett... Give you guys a little backstory for those watching. Garrett uh, served with Monroe here, who's my lead character. Well, I guess the main three are these three, anyways. Um, they're all lead characters in that sense, but. So Garrett served with Monroe, and during a. Uh, during a battle, uh, Garrett basically had his guts blown out, which does happen, believe it or not. But he survived, and he's, you know, he lived, he's, you know, mostly functional, but he, his guts are all torn up, you know, they put him back together, but, um, you know, he's got to deal with that for the rest of his life, you know, basically shitting in a bag and dealing with the wounds of war, and that's a, you know, tremendous aspect of this book, it's not just like a action kind of crime story you know this is about people it's about real not actual real people but people that have been to war and back and dealing with the wounds that they take in not just physically but psychologically and what makes them who they are and basically what they become that's kind of the that's the resounding um, theme of the book is what you become and how you become that in this world. And it's not just these guys, but some of my bad guys too. And we do have some bad guys, really bad guys, and some surprising bad guys. I just get so, I feel like I get so bored with like villains that just don't feel genuine in any way. It seems like there's just so many of them. And that was my feeling watching Black Widow last night. Like, just, I feel like the villains were so half ass. Like, and there's like this new trend now. It's kind of like, I call it, it's like the Fast and Furious trend where they, they have to like make friends with the bad guys at the end of the movie. Spoilers, I guess, if you haven't seen Black Widow, although that's not really giving it away. There's a lot more to it. Um, but uh, there's bad people in this world, in case you didn't know. I'm sure you did. Okay, so we're moving. Oh, wait, shit, that's two. <laughs> I don't want to go on two. By the way, I skipped three. I went straight from four to two, so that's... Let me try and get this over here so you guys can see better. Um, sometimes uh, I'll skip around. And I'll jump a number just because if the blending's getting too tight and it's already, I don't really have enough room to, to, to continue to blend, I'll jump down a number uh, just so that it, I don't overwhelm it. And I'm just going to go subtle with this one. I don't want to go crazy here. But that one just takes that little extra, that little extra blend that can make all the difference. Ah, oh, shit, I should probably blend that a little more. Okay, I probably will. And this is the area, you know, where you can start to spot trouble areas, areas that you need to, to fix up or blend more, or whatever the case may be. But, you know, if you're just, uh, if you've been with me the whole time or if you're just joining, you could, you know, go back at the, the video when it's done and you could see, like, where we started to where we got.
I tend to take, I'll take pictures of my process, of the work in progress. Um, sometimes to share, uh, and then sometimes just to, to see how the work turned out. And hopefully learn something from it. You know, every now and again you can spot like, oh shit, I did that and I fucked it up. How do I not do that again? So it does help to document your work in that way as you go. Just so you can say, all right, I can do that a little better. All right. Really like the way this, uh, let's see if you guys can see it. Really like the way the, uh, <laughs> the knee pad turned out. <laughs> it tends to happen like all in your drawings, you'll start working on this stuff and you'll find, you know, not every stroke is a stroke of genius, but you'll see something you'll be like, ah, oh, I really like the way that turned out. That looks great. And those are happy moments. Happy moments for the artist. So yeah, with the one, I don't want to overwhelm it. Um, so I just kind of come in and just kind of hit Hit the highlights just a little bit, a little bit. Try and give a three-dimensional thing to that belt buckle there. I don't wanna to go too much on these. The good thing with the one is it's almost, um, it's almost white, I guess, in that way. Like it's, it's very subtle. So you don't gotta worry about um, completely washing anything out. That's not gonna happen. If anything, it'll just, you know, it's just gonna blend. And that's what you want. You want, you want that blend. I don't know if you guys can hear it, but it's the beautiful sound of that Copic stroke. Faces can be tough uh, in terms of blending. You know, hitting those shadows and everything can be tricky obviously and you know face is kind of that's you know, a very important thing you don't want to screw up that but even with copics you can still be forgiven for mishaps see that this one really just will just blends it in nicely it's where i want and now garrett's looking like my garrett It's funny, I have, I'm about 20 odd pages into the book, which would be a lot more, but um, I ended up having to homeschool my kid this past year and totally derailed my plans to work on this book exclusively. So it was like here and there that I was able to work on it. But now, you know, COVID's basically over, unless you're counting a bunch of variants and shit. I'm not. Um, So now I can focus on this 100%. And again, the goal is to finish the work. I'm gonna go ahead and take the advice of every writer, artist, creator out there, and they will tell you the most important thing is to finish the work. So I'm looking over here at Monroe, and I'm seeing, I want a little more shade with these with the vein action here so you see there's you know veins in the arms and whatnot and um i just want a little more shade there so i'm gonna take i'm actually gonna go with a three and just put a little subtle shade in there and what i'm gonna do later when i was talking about the coming in with that white marker which is my favorite favorite part is I'll put that over um, those areas. I'm gonna do the same for Garrett here. And so this way you can highlight that light. So some of these aspects, some of these spots, you know, it's very difficult to blend with a Copic and leave the white. So I don't even try. <laughs> uh, Cause I know I'm gonna come back later with my white marker and then I can hit it again uh, with that That makes all the difference So now let's make sure you guys can see here 
I gotta do a little twisting, turning. Oh. I'm losing, losing stuff. Get back up there. Uh, so now I'm gonna just do the gun, his rifle, right here. Again, I'll, I'll get a better angle next time for the next time I do this. But today's just one of those days where I was feeling it and I'm just kind of hit the button. Let's pull out my tripod and hit the button, but I'll take a little more time to prepare it next time I do this so you guys have a, a better vantage point on the work. So this is actually my first time ever drawing this uh, sniper rifle. This is kind of the older sniper rifle uh, that army snipers are using. Some of them still use it, but they've since moved on to a newer weapon as, as well. Um, but this is, this is the classic right here. Very powerful rifle. This three is bleeding a little into my inks. That's one of the downfalls of um, of Copic is depending on what type of ink you use. So I use th these Copic multi-liners. Uh, these are my favorite. These, out of all the pens I've used in my life, and I've used a lot, these I think are my all-time favorite at this point. I absolutely love them. I love... They're kind of imperfect in a way too. And what I love about them is that it allows me a lot more like malleability, malleab malleability to, um, to really get in depth, to really fill in the details, um, which can is, is very tricky with uh, a lot of your, a lot of the other markers out there, at least I've found. That really just sounds like a bunch of fucking rambling, but seriously, those Copic markers, those Copic pens are as awesome as these markers are. So I'm not gonna do much with this gun. I did a lot of kind of shading just with the inks alone. It doesn't need a lot. You really don't need to do a lot. Just kind of hit it, hit it and quit it. Um, you just don't need to do a lot with that. And I feel like, you know, you're gonna kill it if you do. You don't wanna kill it. So other thing too is uh, you ca can't really see it as much, um, but you want to hit the eyeballs. When we're doing eyes, uh, when you're shading eyes, you want to make sure that you hit the whites of the eyes. You want to hit the iris and the whites because believe it or not, there's some shade in there. When you squint uh, and all that stuff, you want to make sure that you're you know capturing that. And I think that's a big part of of just trying to, of just drawing in general, is trying to capture, capture that reality to a point. I'm just scribbling a little bit on Monroe's head here. I worked on him yesterday, but like I said, this is not done. And, you know, the famous uh, quote from Da Vinci, and I'm paraphrasing is an artist's work is, or an art piece is, is never finished, it's just abandoned. And that's kind of what, I, I actually take solace. <laughs> I take solace in that. <laughs> I can I can live with that. Uh, my light's a little overpowering here, but I need to see it. So I'm gonna wrap it up, but I'll give you guys a little closer look so you can see where we went. Uh, where we started is, you know, basically flat, black and white, and then moving on to a more three-dimensional drawing. And so the next thing I'll do is uh, go in with that white. I actually got to do some tattoos on Bex here. She, is, of course, is going to have chest tattoos because she is a very fucked up individual, which isn't to say everybody with a chest tattoo is fucked up, but yeah, maybe they are. I don't know. Um, so I got to do those tattoos that I'm going to finish her up. Um, and you see I already did the clouds. So the clouds here, these were done with Copic as well. I'll probably do just a little more blending with those, but not too much. 
Um, and then you have the sun kind of reflecting here. And just another reflection. That circle doesn't really have to make sense. It's just, you know, it, it makes, you find that circles make things pop. I don't know why. It's just, a, it is the way it is. It highlights kind of a, a centralized area of the drawing. So that's, uh, that's about it. I thank you guys for joining me, for watching. Uh, I'll be doing some more of these just for fun. And uh, thanks for keeping me accountable and watching and giving me your attention. Hope you guys have a great day.